The weather was dank and gloomy, that December morn. Guinevere's eyes opened to the sound of raindrops, as they pelted down upon the iron rooftop of the warehouse where she had slept. Though she was awake, she did not move. Her mind didn't even require time to adjust to the new day, or where she was. She knew what she had done. She would never have moved from that spot, had it not been for the fact that Garrett was no longer beside her. Guinevere clumsily got to her feet, and with a generous stretch, she rose to meet the day. Her nude body shivered in the sterile confines of the abandoned foundry warehouse. As she struggled to redress, a pipe dripped from overhead, causing her to yelp, as an icy water droplet hit her exposed back. Good. You're awake. Guinevere's heart sank at the sound of Garrett's voice. When she had woken up alone, a part of her had hoped that he was already long gone. It would have been so much easier that way. But now? Now, she had to go through the anguish of telling him goodbye. The thief was perched on the window ledge, glowering down into the rain-soaked streets below. With a heavy heart, the young woman approached his side. Hearing her footsteps felt like nails being driven into his ears. He didn't want to leave, it felt wrong. It was wrong. But then again, so was his getting close to her in the first place. Guinevere. A lump rose within his throat as he spoke her name. We need to talk about what happened last night. You don't have to explain anything, Garrett. I know what it was. I know that it will never happen again. She cooed softly, although every syllable stung like acid as they exited her mouth. The thief looked over at her, amazed, as well as a bit offended. You must think I'm quite a monster if you assume that I would say something like that. I... I thought you wanted it that way. Guinevere reasoned, a bit hopeful. I never wanted any of this, Guinevere. I never wanted to train you. I never wanted to trust you. I never wanted to allow my feelings for you to get the better of me. He snorted, but then stared at her with wide eyes. I never wanted you to have to leave. Guinevere stood stunned by his unexpected words. Her heart was now pounding within her chest. She didn't want to leave either. But there were other, much more important reasons why she could never stay with Garrett. Parts of her that would endanger him. As she pondered said things, the thief rose from his seat, and stepped towards her. His posture was tense and his expression confused. I must confess something, Guinevere. Um, not really sure how to react to this. I've never allowed anyone to ever get this close to me. Is it because of what you do for a living? She asked. Garrett scoffed. I wouldn't call it a living. It's not much of a life, after all. But you seem so passionate about what you do. The thief's eyes burned as he looked her up and down, her form no longer a mystery to him. I am. But... He hesitated, looking downward. Garrett? If you tell Basso this, I swear I'll deny it. He snarled, leering back up at her. Tell Basso what exactly? Why would I do that? I would never betray you, Garrett. I thought you knew that by now. She smiled. Sometimes I think the old codger's right about me. That I need a hobby, or a woman, or something. He frowned. I never put much stock into what he had to say. I find that people who make too many mistakes are unreliable. And Basso's made plenty in his time. 
Yet you rely on him so heavily in terms of information and contacts. Guinevere commented, a bit confused again. That's because Basso's the closest thing that I've ever had to a friend. And <laughs> you claim to be a loner. Guinevere joked, trying desperately to lighten the mood. One friend does not change that. If it did, then I suppose I have been quite the hypocrite. He managed to smile weakly at Guinevere. Well, you're certainly not that. She continued, feeling a bit less melancholy. The conversation was acting as a powerful anesthetic, for the moment. That is, until Garrett walked up to her, and undid the effects. The thief leaned into her flushed face, and kissed her forehead. Taking up her cheeks within his palms, Garrett held her gaze with his. Guinevere, I... thought that this would be easy. I'm not going to lie to you. I've had my share of women in the past, and it was always easy then, but this... He watched as her eyes overflowed with the first of many tears. The sight of her pain, and her inevitable suffering to follow his absence was becoming unbearable. Garrett fought to hold on to his own emotions. Feelings which he had let come so freely last night now forced to be stuffed deep down into his subconscious. Even his false eye seemed to be brimming with tears. His remaining eye trembled with remorse, and an unspeakable need. This is too much. I always feared that this would happen. They even warned me about it. Who? When I was a young man, I was mentored under the instruction of the Keepers. They let me go. At least that's what they tell you, but in truth, I ran away. I knew that I was better than what they had to offer me, and I wanted to do things my own way. They called it reckless folly. They said that such actions would get me killed. They were wrong. Over the years, I developed my own system. I made my own rules, one of which I have now broken. Why are you telling me all of this? Guinevere inquired. The truth is, I could have had a family by now. I could have moved from the city to a place where I was not known, not hunted. I avoided this, however, choosing to devote myself to my art. I thought at the time that feelings were useless in terms of romance. Something happened to me 16 years ago that changed my belief. And ever since, I've found myself asking many questions. Garrett released her from his grasp, and sighed heavily. <sighs> but it doesn't matter what I wanted back then, or even now. I have my art, Guinevere, and it has consumed me. After two and a half decades of dedication, it has become part of me. Stealing is how I define myself, Guinevere. It's who I am. It's all that I know, and sadly, that is the truth as to why you must leave. Even if I did permit you to stay, I wouldn't know the first thing about being with you. As Guinevere listened to him speak, she could feel her heart tear in half. Not for her own sake, but rather, for his. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. Garrett was so seasoned, so wise, did he honestly believe that all he was good for was his art? Garrett, that's not true. You're wonderful at loving me. The thief managed a brief, but meaningful smile. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. The young woman smiled sweetly into his lost expression. Taking her hand, she cupped his cheek and turned his head to face her watery eyes. I've been enjoying your company since the evening when we first met. Even when you were so tough on me. And I could continue to enjoy it. I understand what I need to do. You've trained me well and make no mistake. I am extremely grateful. There are a lot of people in this city that I can steal for and help now. 
because of you, Garrett. I don't need to live with you, and no, it doesn't need to interfere with our work. But it doesn't have to end, either. The thief blinked away a single, rebellious tear as it tried to slip past his eyelids. Are you sure that you would be alright with that? He asked. Guinevere wasted no time in giving him his answer. She threw herself into his awaiting embrace, feeling as he once again devoured her essences. The seeds beneath her flesh began to erupt with passion. <laughs>